And we're back here at the Staples Center. And here is a look at our Got Milk starting lineups. And we begin with the rookie starters. Dwayne Wade and Kurt Heinrich will be in the backcourt. Carmelo Anthony and LeBron James are the forwards. And Chris Kamen from the LA Clippers. Clippers have a representative on both the rookies and the sophomores. Mano Ginobili will be starting with Marco Yarich of the Clippers in the back line. And up front, Carlos Boozer along with Yao Ming. And Amari Stoudemire, last year's Rookie of the Year from the Phoenix Sun. Dick, your, your starting lineups were good, but they couldn't quite match young Austin Kaleka. No, I couldn't, and I'd only last six minutes. So. Look who's <laughs> jumping center, Yao Ming and James. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we, we may see a lot of unusual things. All right, the officials, Phil Robinson, Mark Davis, Rodney Mott, and Eric Stoudemire are putting the sophomores in front. Well, right away, you see James guarding Stoudemire. Not a chance is he going to be able to cover him, and that's why Carlos Boozer had those words. These guys are just much bigger and stronger than the rookie team. That's why it's going to be extremely important for these rookies to try to get out and run quickly. And Heinrich hitting a three. So Kirk Heinrich, who was uh, out of uh, Kansas, reached the final game and played against Carmelo Anthony in the NCAA championship game last April. And the top pick and outstanding young point guard for the Chicago Bulls. So it is a three to two start here. Here's Yao Ming, guarded by Kamen. The turnaround by Yao, and he hits it. And what they want from Yao, I guess Jeff Van Gundy and everyone gets a little more aggressive than he already is for that great seven saw five size. Yeah, Van Gundy actually said a couple weeks ago he wants Yao Ming to just come down and elbow his opponent in the throat if he has to. He, he, that's how much aggressiveness uh, Van Gundy wants out of him. And Carmelo Anthony coming up with his first field goal of the game. It's, it's, it's obvious the second year guys have a height advantage, but usually in all star games, the advantage goes to the guards because they don't pass it in the middle. They <laughs> shoot right. as soon as they get down. Carlos Boozer making the score six to five in favor of the sophomores. Here is uh, Kamen and uh, Mari Stoudemire. Rookie of the year, only at age 21, so he's a youngster. I guess he could play for the uh, rookie team if the situation's permitted. Here is Mato Ginobili with a great feed to Boozer, and they're working Boozer in on good passes. Love watching Ginobili play. He's just so creative, such a wonderful passer. And I think the range of his game, Steve, I mean, he, here's a guy that will defend, rebound, pass, score. He does a little bit of everything. I should say a lot of everything. <laughs> And uh, he'll have a chance right here. Mano Ginobili, who uh, was a starter earlier in the year, now coming off the bench because of his spark, as uh, Yao tried to get it over and then threw it away. So uh, here's Mano Ginobili in action. Well, he's so creative with his left hand passing, and Carlos Boozer with the finish. Wayne Wade with the layup on the other end. So the tempo is going to start to pick up. It's eight to seven early on in what has been a seesaw game, and it uh, is last touched by the rookies. So the uh, sophomores will have 18 Sophomore. seconds. Sophomores off to a great shooting start, four for four from the field. Well, and that's usually the key in these games because you don't see a lot of defense. The one who gets the most possessions offensively is the one who usually can win the game. And uh, there's Cayman with the rebound. For the rookies, rookies have been settling for the outside shots, and the sophomores have been working it inside. Not that time, as LeBron James sails in. Isn't it just amazing to see a guy like LeBron James coming out of high school no! in the NBA this year, doing what he's doing and playing with these people? Stunning, really. I mean, it, it, you know, despite all the hype that surrounded this kid for the last couple of years, I think he's actually lived up to it all. I mean, he he has played unbelievably well. As as he as Carmelo Anthony getting his first field goal. And these guys are all about winning. Carmelo Anthony coming in, uh, 14th leading scorer in the NBA, averaging a little over 19. The thing about Anthony and James is how they have conducted themselves under the pressure that they have had to deal with. Yes. That's the thing that's most amazing to me because it's so easy for anybody who's gotten that kind of attention to go off the deep end. Yeah. Especially at 18 or huh. 19. Pretty amazing. Unheard of. Marco Yarich, uh, the field goal at the other side. Oh! Nine on the shot clock. And uh, Dwayne Wade tries to put up 
A fancy shot from the corner. The ball knocked out of bounds, and it's uh, going the same way. Last touched by LeBron James. So LeBron James, who was the number one pick. Carmelo Anthony was number three. Darko Milicic, who was second by Detroit, doesn't get a chance to play. Well, he's he's got to earn his due. And, and he's uh, even younger than these guys with less experience, so it's going to take him a little longer. Here's Melo with the alley-oop to James. Oh, well, there's a highlight with the two of them right off the bat. Good Carlos Boozer is smiling on the way back down. When he first started to throw that pass, I didn't even see James in my vision. Well, James didn't, uh, Anthony didn't see that pass intended for him. And uh, here's a little fancy stuff and Amari Stoudemire stuffing it through. Look, we've done a few of these games, and I'll tell you what, they're going to put on a show right now, but when we get to the end, and if it's a decent close game, you're going to see the competitor come out in all of these guys. Well, what happens, Dick, is you have to be liberated. You're so accustomed to systems, and you've been playing all along with your own team, you're a little afraid to try it until you get in the latter stages. When you look at this, Kamala Anthony goes in. That's what I said. These kind of games are dunks and runs. Now, look at this one. I mean, he throws that thing up, and James just comes into the picture and slams it. I was looking at Marco Yarich. He says, what am I watching out here? I'm right in the middle of this. So we have a timeout and a one-point sophomore lead. Well, welcome back to the Got Milk Rookie Challenge. And with me, Jay Williams, who played in this game a year ago as a rookie, but had his sophomore season shelled by a devastating motorcycle accident. First of all, tell us about your rehab and how it's going. The only, the only thing about rehab is it's hard. Uh, it's every single day of my life, uh, but it's needed for me to get back to where I want to be. Recently, the Chicago Bulls bought out your contract. What does that mean to your future in Chicago and in the NBA? Well, uh, I think my future, no, my future in the NBA is going to be something that's going to happen. Uh, no matter what, I think uh, when I do come back, I do have a kind of honor to the Bulls, even though they bought me out. I mean, for John Paxson to kind of stick with me throughout this year, that's been a great thing for me. As painful as the accident was back on June 19th, the rehab as well, what brings you to a game like this? I think this would be more painful, bringing back memories, wishing you were out there. It's painful, but it's a good pain. Uh, <laughs> this is the kind of pain you need. It keeps you hungry. And when I go back to Durham, it's going to make me work that much harder to get back where I want to be. Two of your Duke teammates playing, Mike Dunleavy and Carlos Boozer, Boozer guaranteed a victory, so it would be a blowout. He talked like that when he was with Mike Krzyzewski. He always saw that. That was the best part of him. He always wanted to win. I think so. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Craig and oh. Amari Stoudemire unable to handle the pass. Well, Kirk Heinrich hit another uh, long-range shot, and how about uh, Wade to Mello with another alley oop uh, basket? It's a 15 to 12 lead for the rookies, Steve. We're not seeing a whole lot of defense out here, are we? Did, have you noticed any yet, Coach? Not really. And, and the coaches are saying that those dunks are just as I designed. <laughs> and a right. good timeout by Doug Collins. Yes, excellent timeout. <laughs> I mean, come on, Doug. You're calling timeouts I know. here? I know. You know, he's only been back with TNT, what, about three right. months? So he hasn't gotten that coaching stuff out of him. Carmelo Anthony hitting long range, and he has six points. He is the high scorer in the game. Just a delightful young man, Boozer, on the, re the receiving end of another great pass. This one again from Mano Ginobili. The thing that is impressive, though, the players enjoy the colorful plays just based on the passes they're throwing. They can four shots, but they set each other up for great plays. Well, as you said, John, this is like a coming out party for these young players as LeBron James uh, with a hesitation in lay-in. 19 to 4. James right now has six. So does Carmelo Anthony. And on the turnover, into the game is Jarvis Hayes, the rookie for the Washington Wizards, tries a three. Chris Bosch also in the game for the rookies. Bosch, very impressive rebounder for the Toronto Raptors. And the steal by James. Here's Mello. Mello to James. It's a two man show. Forget what I said about maybe someone else coming up and stealing the thunder of these rookies. Don't have to. Stoudemire at the other end. So we're seeing a little preview of Slam Dunk tomorrow and some of the exciting plays. It's a five point lead for the rookies. Carmelo missed, but there's Dwayne Wade. Ready to pick it up. The interesting thing about James and Anthony, as competitive in all the comparisons that are made, these guys enjoy one another. And that's a great yes. thing to see. They've been close from the day they came into the NBA. No big rivalry there at all. Exactly. It's probably competitively healthy, but look at this dunk. I mean, he could have taken that shot, but he throws it over to James. James does that to, for him a couple of times. Tayshawn Prince will check into the game for the sophomores. Mike Dunleavy coming in as well. 
And James and Anthony have uh, 14 points between them. And uh, Josh Howard, who is first round pick of uh, Dallas. And there is the other Miami Heat player, Adonis Haslam, who was not drafted. That's a pretty good story. Amazing story, and he's played really well for Miami this year. He's kind of a guy who gets down and dirty, gets a lot of offensive rebounds, sets picks, plays defense, been a nice pickup for them. And Ronald Flip Murray for Seattle. Here's Dunleavy missing from inside the three-point arc. Well, they absolutely, they, they, they finally ran a play. We have to change that. <laughs> <laughs> These guys haven't been liberated yet. John, now, if you would have had, the, you know, and you had great talent, George, you had even greater talent than that. Would you let him play this kind of game? Fire and fall back. Fire <laughs> and fall back. <laughs> I never thought I'd ever hear you say that. Strictly summer league. Fire <laughs> and fall back. Tayshawn Prince. And it's 21 to 18. The rookie's in front here with a little more than 12 minutes remaining. Knocked out of bounds. And there is Doug Collins, who has coaching experience, now behind the bench, but only for one game. He'll be back behind the mic. Next week, and A.C. Green is assistant. Very popular out here, former Laker. And Jarvis Hayes going up, and he is fouled. I bet Doug's been drawing up plays all week. Sure. Well, Mike Vertello did that last year, you oh, know, what he sure. shows. Vertello, I came into the dressing room last year in the locker room, and he had plays <laughs> on three blackboards. Did anybody pay any attention? Somebody did. <laughs> Hayes missing the first free throw. 21 to 18, the rookies leading here and having a good time. But uh, that's the way they looked after they saw the play. <laughs> yeah, they just laughed. Uh, <laughs> they were laughing. You gotta be kidding me, Mike. Yeah. We're not running plays out here. So Melo and LeBron sitting together on the bench, scoring 14 between them. It's a 22-18 lead for the rookies. Here's Flip Murray. What a start he had this year filling in. For Ray Allen for Seattle did a tremendous job. Talk about great stories. How about this kid just coming out of nowhere, came over to Seattle in the Ray Allen trade, kind of as a throw in, and all of a sudden he was averaging 20 a game for the first couple months of the season. Here is uh, the coach's son, Mike Dunleavy. Son, of course, coaches for these hometown Los Angeles Clippers. They are co hosts, by the way, in case you're wondering. The Lakers and the Clippers both play at the Staples Center. Here is Dwayne Wade, wide open. What a year he's having. I mean, yes. this, uh, Wade is a special talent, very definitely so athletic as well as skillful. And there's Carlos Boozer trying to back up his words during the week. He has eight points, and we're tied at 22. Speaking of athletic and skillful, I mean, Carlos Boozer hit the 35th pick in the draft last year. Unbelievable that he could slip that far. He's playing beautifully for the Cavs. Howard's shot goes over the top, so it uh, goes over. And Amari Stoudemire will come in. There's Michael Cooper, who has been the coach of the two-time WNBA champion LA Stars. And he has a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with him. Cooper and Kareem, two of the great performers for the Lakers in the 80s. And here is Murray getting a move in there. Good hop step for Murray. I like that hand signal that Cooper's <laughs> giving. I think that means talk. <laughs> you know, he's sort of like waving his hands. And... It's something Coop did very little when he was a player, I might add. Hayes missing from the perimeter. And here's Nene from Brazil, one of the four international players in this game. Stoudemire working his way in. And uh, Udonis Haslam uh, watched a good basket right there. <laughs> yes, he did. You saw Stoudemire go up with his right hand. I think one of the things that Phoenix would like to see him do is work on that left hand finish around the basket because everything with Stoudemire is just right, right, right. Josh Howard was right on that lay-in, and the sophomores are up by two, 26 to 24. And they... Didn't have control inside, but he tried to get it over to Dunley. He last touched by the rookie team. This is the start of a big all-star weekend here on TNT. And you're, you're looking at the two of the big reasons why this is a great highlight to begin this weekend. First time, prime time, the Got Milk Rookie Challenge. Amari Stoudemire now with 10 points. Some of these guys are doing more passing in this all-star game than they do on their teams. <laughs> That's a left-handed compliment if I ever heard. <laughs> Dwayne Wade fouled as he goes baseline. Now it's a new philosophy for All-Star Games, Steve. Pass. It, it won't last long, <laughs> Coach. <laughs> I tell you, it's really interesting in watching how the guys start off, Steve, 
penalty because mm -hmm. all the things that they're trying in this game, they've been told not to do during the regular season. That's right. Oh, really? I can try yeah. this? Yeah. Well, tomorrow there's a whole slate of NBA action on TNT beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern exclusively on TNT presented by America Online. And it begins with the uh, great performances, All Star Saturday night. And there is Flip Murray, rebound by Dene. No one around you today, just put it through. And it's 30 to 24, stops up by six. No need for pump fakes tonight. <laughs> Nobody's gonna play any defense. You gotta go, you gotta go. Josh Howard guarded by Dunleavy. Two Western Conference players. Howard putting it over Dunleavy. There's Josh Howard coming in the game and hitting a couple. You know, if you really wonder how talented some of these kids are, you almost have to see them in an all-star game to really see some of the skill level that they have. Because so much is conformed to team play. In the regular season, you should be. And a guy like Josh Howard plays for a team that has three or four stars right. in front of him, so you don't often really get to see what he can do. So wait your turn, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Dunleavy and Udonis Haslam score for their respective teams. And under nine and a half to go in the first. Nene didn't have to pump there. Nene from Brazil and uh, is second in the NBA in field goal percentage. And with shots like that, no wonder he's 53% on the year. They kind of act like he's mad at the rim. <laughs> yeah. There's nobody between him and the rim. And he's really mad. And there's Bosch, the southpaw, who played at Georgia Tech. And he is uh, fourth in scoring for the rookies this year and averaging over seven rebounds. So 6'10", Bosch, a very active performer. And uh, try to go in before he uh, went up for the shot. He turns it over to the sophomore team. And there they come back as Carmelo Anthony and LeBron James return to the game for the rookies. Uh, Anthony has six. And James has eight, and the sophomore shooting 74%, so a timeout. Man, it looks like a love-in with some of the passes that they threw in, but I agree with what you said. They're going to tighten up the oh. later we get into this game. Every All-Star game we've ever seen, even this game on Sunday, they'll have fun early. Well, eventually, you want to win. There's no question. So maybe sooner or later, we'll see some defense. Los Angeles in the Staples Center. I'm joined by the Hornets, Baron Davis, and this will be your second selection to the All-Star team, but your first time in the skills test. What are you anticipating? <laughs> We're going to find out if Baron Davis really has skills tomorrow. I got some skills. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't want to mess up. That's all. I just want to finish, and hopefully I can finish in the top two. Now, you've had a chance to go through the obstacle course at all, or not really? I don't even know what it looked like. I don't even know what it looked like. When I get out there, it's going to be my first son. So I hope I don't go first, because I know I'm going to mess up, because I don't even know what, what, it, what it consists of. I know it's really early on in this game so far, but what have you seen so far from the rookies, in particular Carmelo Anthony and LeBron James, who you've seen a little bit of during the first uh, half of the season? Basically the same thing you see all year. Highlights and, and showmanship. And you know, they, th those are two great guys, two great people, all, all both on and off the court. And, you know, on the court, they're phenomenal players, and they're going to be big-time superstars. They're going to carry this league. Hey, good luck on Saturday and Sunday. Please don't mess up on the skills oh, test. Well, just as long as I don't fall, I'll be all right. All right, let's send it back to you, Dick. All right, Cheryl, uh, good to see Baron Davis uh, well-schooled and ready for that uh, skills challenge. Everybody who's played against him knows he's not going to mess up. No. Tayshaun Prince cleans up after the initial miss inside by Murray, and it is a 36 to 30 game, so the uh, sophomores match their biggest lead at this first half, eight and a half minutes remaining. Two 20 minute halves, make up this game, cannot foul out, but we don't often see a lot of fouling despite that. There's Carmelo Anthony going away toward the baseline and hitting the jump. So Anthony and LeBron James each with eight. You know, the interesting thing about both of those kids, it remind me a lot of the attitude that Magic Johnson had in playing. Not only could he play, he enjoyed playing. And you got a great kick in both Anthony and uh, Carmelo, Anthony and James are that way. They're having fun out there playing. Yeah, James uh, with a great feed for the basket. And coming back, Tayshaun Prince hitting three. Josh Howard got that last one. You know what? The one thing about Magic Johnson and these two guys, you just look at their face, you know how much they love the game. They're smiling all the time. Do you remember Magic's first game with the Lakers when yes. he fed Kareem for the hook? And 
and, and Kareem makes a game winner, and all of a sudden Magic jumps into his arms <laughs> as if they've just won the world championship. That's natural. Yeah. And, and, and that set the tone for, for his whole career. Tayshawn Prince hitting two threes in a row, setting the tone, and the sophomores with their biggest lead of the game. A little high wire act there. Dick Stockton along with Steve Kerr, John Thompson, the got built rookie challenge. And I tell you, they ought to have a new event in the skills game on this, uh, Saturday, and that is the slam that misses, <laughs> and how far does it bounce into the crowd? Well, what do you think? Well, I told you they're liberated. But can you imagine either one of those plays in a regular game, what the coach would have done? <laughs> no, you can. <laughs> that, that, what, exactly. what, what coach? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Fall away off the side of the backboard by Dwayne Wade. And here is a Flip Murray working his way in, and he's fouled. Heinrich was defending. Dwayne Wade inside. Kirk Heinrich of the Chicago Bulls. And, of course, Jay Williams uh, earlier talking with Greg Sager about his NBA situation. So on the line will be Flip Murray, Ronald Murray, who went to uh, Shaw College. Had a great early start to this year, and his flip on the free throw misses. Well, take a trip to the NBA store on NBA.com to pick up the official All-Star program and other great All-Star merchandise. I tell you, you look at Camilla Anthony and some of the things that he can do. Certainly, it's understood about James, and everybody certainly recognizes Anthony. But Anthony is one heck of a basketball player at both ends of the floor. Here's Heinrich, who earlier hit a three. This one is short. And there is Carmelo Anthony lurking underneath. Could like not convert. I like the way he misses, too. Here is Murray to Nene. That's the shortest bounce pass I've ever seen. <laughs> I was looking at the seriousness on Kareem's face after he made the play. He said, just like I designed it. And Howard firing for three, and Amari Stoudemire getting the rebound. If you're keeping scores of the dunks, the softs have a 2-1 to one ratio, 10-5. to five, Make it 11-5. to five. The sophomores are out dunking the rookies and also leading by 15. They, they need to tighten up the deal. <laughs> oh! LeBron James. Might as well be the dunk contest, Steve. We don't tighten up a little D out here. But know, this is fun. I turned away because you said something. I never even saw it. <laughs> you can't turn away from long in this game. Tayshawn Prince hitting a third three-pointer. Tayshawn Prince, former Kentucky Wildcat, and the 23rd pick for the Detroit Pistons. Only played in half the games last year. Has been a starter now. Good defensive player. There's LeBron James hitting a three. 13 for LeBron James as he hits his first three. And Tayshawn Prince has come home to play in the All-Star. He's an L.A. boy. You know, it's either dunk or long three-pointer or no count. Running and dunking. Yeah. But it's a it's a fun appetizer to this great weekend. And uh, Tayshawn Prince, Yarich back in. Amari Stoudemire puts it in. Kamen has come back in, and you have uh, Carmelo Anthony, who hoists uh, a three, and he comes up with one. Hey, if LeBron can do it, I can do it. What I love about this game is it just shows what good hands the NBA is in over the next decade because you're looking at these group of guys who are going to dominate this league and think of how much fun the fans are going to have watching all these guys over the next 10, 15 years. Murray gets the basket. And, and, and that's what we're too, Steve, about the happiness that Magic brought to the game. It wasn't just the level of competition and skill, but he brought a fun. Both of those kids play the game like they're having fun playing it. Marco Yarich beating his teammate Kamen. And Nene getting the assist. It's 58 to 42. Here's uh, LeBron James with the three point attempt. That's why I always have to laugh when people say, We'll never see another player like. You can fill in the blank there as Murray hits it. We'll never see another player thank, except it blank, except another player comes along better and there are other people in time. That's the way world is. It's the way basketball is. Well, you're absolutely correct. We like to salvage and cherish our moments of excitement right. that we've had. I'm one of those you'll never see another yeah. player like. But these two guys made believers out of me. I was a Doubton Thomas with both of these guys because of the height. And then you just saw how they did. You have to respect, you know, how they how they dealt with this thing. Howard cleaning up with the man. Stopwatch to see how much time actually goes by between shots. 
Can we, can we get one of our uh, production people to, to do that for us? And, and, and why do we have a 24 second clock? Let's put in a, like an eight second uh, clock right. for this game. Why do we have defense out there? We might as well take the oh, defense you'll see off the floor. You'll see it. <laughs> you'll see it. There's Murray this. coming in. Well, you look at this. I mean, this is from a standstill. I mean, he's basically standing still and goes with run, jump, pass. These kids can do a little bit of everything, and not just James and Anthony. All of these kids are extremely talented. Sophomores leading 60 to 47, and Carmelo Anthony and LeBron James have 27 of those 47 points between them. Let's eavesdrop on Doug. So the 22nd timeout. Chris Kamen uh, leaving the game for the sophomore team, replaced by Yao Ming. I'd, I'd just like to see a little bit of more defense. <laughs> yeah, you know, but, like it. you know, every one of these guys' coaches before they left said, "If Don't you get hurt, get hurt in Don't this game, hurt. I will have I you next." You <laughs> Don't get hurt, and the coach is absolutely That's correct. That's right. Well, Aaron Boone got hurt playing basketball. These guys will get hurt playing baseball. That's for sure. Is. LeBron James coming over knocks it out of bounds. And I'm going to tell you something else they won't get hurt doing, Dick. Playing, <laughs> playing defense. defense. Taking <laughs> you know, a charge. You know, John, you know, you, you've hit on a theme here, you know. <laughs> oh, my God. Coach, you've hit on a theme. I, did, I, I, I just want them to act like they're playing defense. Fake it a little bit. Marco Yarich around the screen. What about well executed offense? Oh, but it's brilliant offense. <laughs> both, both coaches, just the execution. <laughs> just ask him, right? <laughs> Here's Carmelo Anthony. This kid is picked up by Yao Ming on the switch. Well, that would have been a crowd loser if that going in. And just see how he accelerates. I mean, this kid is so talented. He kind of reminds me of one of those old school small forwards from the 70s and 80s, like, like uh, Bernard King or Kiki Vandeweghe, a guy who can step out to the three run the lane, finish around the basket. Kind of a, you know, a little bit of a throwback. The thing you have to wonder about with both he and James is where did the confidence come from to play against guys at this level as well as they have played against them? Here's Boozer from oh, Otto Ginobili. And a 62 to 47 lead for the sophomores. By the way, Coach Thompson picked the sophomores to win this game. Are they making them look good? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're impressed with that. Yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> Here's LeBron James feeding Udonis Haslam. And he's fouled by Manu Ginobili. If, if James had been in the Wild West, he would have been a heck of a gunfighter. He can get the ball off the floor to you so quick. It is unbelievable. He gets it out of the host this team, doesn't he? <laughs> Real quick. Coming up, it's the Verizon Wireless Halftime Report with Ernie Johnson, Kenny Smith, Magic Johnson, and Charles Barkley. They'll discuss this first half and preview Sunday's All-Star Game. Udonis Haslam hitting the first free throw. Played in France last year and started the first 18 games uh, for the Miami Heat and has been bothered by a strained knee. Carmelo Anthony. Check this out. Leaving the game. And Dwayne Wade coming in. And there is Tayshawn Prince. But there's Yao Ming. How about Yao Ming doing double duty? And it's a good thing that they don't have this game on Saturday as they used to. Because he'd have to play two games in two days as if he doesn't play. That but he'll start. He'd be okay with it. I think. <laughs> I think so. I think he'd love. <laughs> you think he could? It is age. Hey, there's a good extra pass to Tayshaun Prince. See, and, and Ginobili is one of those kind of guys who does not know how to cut back. Mm, yeah. He plays hard all the time. I talked to him before the game, and he said, Pop told me that if I get hurt doing any of my crazy stuff, he's going to kill me when I get back. But Manu can't help it. You're right. He's the kind of guy you want as a coach, Steve, right? Yeah. You threaten him. You don't want him. Yeah. Now listen. That's right. He's a great performer, one of the league leaders in steals. Can Beat you really so many ways, including the three, and there are a couple of former great Lakers on the bench coaching the sophomore team. You know, I was fortunate enough to grow up in this town watching the Lakers, and 
What a joy to watch Kareem down on the block and then to see Michael Cooper play defense the way he did on that team was unbelievable. LeBron James with a reverse slam going baseline. I don't know if you'd want to pick him up on the weak side the way he came in. I don't think Cooper can be real thrilled with what's going on out here. Exactly. As good that's as he was. <laughs> that's not his game. You can lock somebody up. Really lock him up. Carlos Boozer with 12. And uh, Tayshawn Prince with 13. Amari Stoudemire with 12 of the leading scores for the sophomores. And here is Haslam with the lay-in. LeBron James with 16 points is the leading scorer in the game. And Carmelo Anthony has 11 as well. Here is Prince with the lay-in from Yarin. Hell of a feed by Ginobili. G G Ginobili looked <laughs> with a darting look at someone when that layup was made the last time. Pulling up Bosch. And we have just under 40, 45 seconds remaining in the first half as Marco Yaric. You know, Nick, normally at this point we say they, they could go for a two for one. <laughs> I, I think six it's like one. six for five right, right now. <laughs> right. Wade gives it to his teammate, uh, Haslam. As you said, Dick, why do we need the clock? That's right. To shut off that clock. You know, you know they ought to have an eight-second clock for shooting, Steve, and three seconds to get it across get it over. the mid-court line. Still wouldn't be a problem. No. Mono Ginobili hanging on to it. James all over the floor. Trying to, I guess, make a reputation as a defensive player. One of the things Michael Jordan had was a great defensive dig-in style early on in his career. Yeah, and it's something that LeBron is going to have to develop because he, he's so athletic, as you see on that dunk. He's so strong. He can guard three different positions. But I think that's the hardest thing to do as a young player is to understand how to cover people, and make good decisions defensively, and understand footwork. Uh, when he gets some more experience, I think he has the potential to be one of the best defenders in the league. Well, it starts with the energy level. You got to put the energy into it, and you've got to be praised for doing it or recognized for doing it. But Michael certainly was unusual in that way, and most of the real great players did compete. You can't compete without playing at both ends of the floor. And it's so difficult to, to play both ends physically because you get tired, but Michael was able to do it. Dwayne Wade is able to lay it in with 1.7 seconds to go in the half. And the sophomores with a big lead and Yao Ming in the shot put, winning the silver medal in the Summer Olympics. And that is the end of the first half of the God Build Rookie Challenge. Yao says, pretty good throw. Maybe we ought to go into the combine in the NFL in Indianapolis, huh? Did you hear Steve Kerr say that it's tiring to play these? Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I wonder why. Well, he played hey, a shooter. He was 3,000 miles away from you, my friend. 72 to 59, the sophomores lead as we check in with Cheryl Miller. Thanks a lot, Dick. And Josh, first and foremost, you have eight points. But if you look at the first half, there's either dunks or three points. Ain't a whole lot in between that, is it? Nah, I think everybody's out there trying to get their offense on. Nobody's playing defense. But it, it's, it's fun. It's what the All-Star game's about. How do you guys get back into the second half? Uh, play defense. <laughs> Just that simple? That simple, yeah. All right, let's send it over to you, Craig Sager. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. A year ago, as a rookie, Carlos Boozer tried to play defense. Jason Richardson tossed the ball off his forehead, then drilled the shot. Not only embarrassing Carlos Boozer, but humiliating you as well. Now, this year, you're trash talking. You're dunking on Chris Kamen, grabbing your tattoo. What's happened to you in a year? Oh, I just matured, you know. Was last year, yeah, obviously, you get, you get brought in by the older guys, and when you get here as a sophomore, you, get, you do the same thing to the rookies. You said you would destroy these rookies. Oh, absolutely. We're up 72 59. We're up by 13 points. We're rolling right now. Um, we're going to come out and play a great day in the second half and win the game. What's the tattoo say? It says the beast unleashed. Every time I dunk it hard, the beast is unleashed. Unleashed in that first half. Good job. <laughs> All right, Craig, thank you very much. And so those 72 points by the sophomore team is the most in a first half since the series began. So the first 20 minute. Half is history. The sophomores lead the rookies coming up the Verizon halftime right here in L.A.
And welcome back to the Got Milk Rookie Challenge. And uh, this is a 72 to 59 game, the highest scoring half in this 10 game series. Dick Stockton, along with the coach, Stevie Kerr, here as well, having a wonderful time. Stevie, I can, thank you. I want time. I like that. Yeah, it keeps you young. All it's right, not thanks. bad. And I remember <laughs> talking about milk. I remember John Thompson guzzling milk after he won the NCAA championship after hugging Bill Russell back in Seattle. I love the milk. Yeah, okay. I love the milk. Works. Just like yeah. Steve loves shooting. That's, That's why right. he loves okay. this game. <laughs> and we're not seeing defense, but Charles Barkley brought out a great point, I thought. At halftime, he says, you know, you're listening to about LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, these sophomores are saying, you know, we got some pride. And they're playing like they have some pride. That, that's the big lead. Well, we heard Boozer talk about it before the game a couple days ago. I mean, he, he, he's proving it. He, he's actually playing pretty hard. But I tell you, LeBron's pretty smart. It's FGA, Steve, in this <laughs> one, baby. He got 14 shots pushed up at that basket. Here's a look at our Got Milk game summary here. Look at the shooting. Well, I think Doug Collins would love to see his rookie team get that shooting percentage defense down under 65% here for the second half. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, players have been uh, miked in this one, and uh, right now let's uh, listen in to some of the action from the first half. Big Yow! going to lose, right? Hey, huh? Yeah, boy, yeah, Melo! Out. So some of the uh, verbiage and from the first half action as you look in on the Doug Collins and AC Green in their rookies huddle trailing 72 to 59. We're down by as many as 17 points as we said the most first half points 72 by the sophomores and combined first half points 131 last year was the first time we had both teams go over 100. It looms large that we might see the same. I think it's probable, but but you know what was really funny, Steve? We indicated earlier how Van Gundy was trying to put emphasis to Yao to lay the bone on somebody. Yeah, forget that. Now, can you imagine <laughs> Camilo Anthony coming up to you and telling you what he's going to do, and then you Yao Ming when he drives, letting him go? That's what Van Gundy meant. <laughs> Cheryl Miller. Well, thanks a lot. First of all, I just got off <laughs> talking to Doug Collins, who said that I felt like I was being pistol whipped in the first half after the sophomores had that blistering 70% uh, performance. He said, obviously, defensively, we have to make a better effort and keep these guys in front. One quick injury update. Jarvis Hayes will not be back. He sprained his right ankle, guys. All right. That's what you don't want to see, but Jarvis Hayes, uh, the fall away oh. by Boozer. And there is Amari Stoudemire scoring a lot of points early, and he is fouled. Amari Stoudemire with 12 points on 6 for 7 shooting as we check in with Craig Sager. Well, Dick, as we've been mentioning, basketball purists like you see good play at both ends. That includes defense. Michael Cooper, even though he has this big lead, was not happy with that first half. He talked defense the whole time to his team. He even went to the point of gave, giving them a zone. He says, we have a lead. We have to go out and guard the perimeter. They're going to use a 3-2 zone here in the second half to try to slow down the rookies so they can't come back and try to make up this deficit. <laughs> Can you believe these guys actually preaching defense at halftime like anybody's going to listen? Somebody better tell Coop that hearing is a physical thing. <laughs> Listening is a psychological thing. Very well done. <laughs> Speaking of that, the basket by Boozer. He has 14 and will go to the line on a uh, another foul. And, so uh, looking at the uh, scoring uh, LeBron James is the game's high scorer with 20 points 9 of 14 from the field and hit two of his six threes Carmelo Anthony had 11 on five of nine shooting. How do you like to shoot 53 percent for a half and be down by 13. <laughs> you wouldn't like it at all. No. But I do think that as the game goes on if it doesn't get too far out of hand that you'll see a lot of defense yeah. being played. Carmelo went back door that time for the slam. How about Coop going to the 3-2 zone eventually to try to pick up the defense? Yarich off the mark for a three. Pick it up or introduce it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you, you, you go with the force the long range shots, they miss, and all of a sudden you get easy layups oh, and stuff man. like this, and all of a sudden we have a game. This kid is smooth though. I mean you, you see the thing, Anthony is so big but can, you know, so mobile. 
do so many things. What did you think coming in when Anthony had the experience of winning an NCAA title playing in his freshman year? Stoudemire slams it through versus LeBron James. What did you think before? Well, I, I, Le LeBron James is the one that has surprised me. You know, Camilla Anthony, I thought, would be a very good player just based on what you said, having played the NCAA tournament going to the finals. I was more concerned about LeBron and how he would react to the pressure because he hadn't encountered it, but he's been superb with what he's done. Steve, how did you think? Well, I thought the experience was going to help him a lot, and, and it has. I, I didn't think LeBron James would be this good. I, I, I felt like Carmelo would be a pretty big score right off the bat. And I don't know if you guys noticed, did you just see Carmelo dribble through the legs of Carlos yes, Boozer? Yes, yes. Yeah. Here's Kamen. And here's Chris Kamen. And it's a 79-65 lead, a 14-point game. Now Stoudemire is a guy yeah. that I definitely would get out of his way if he's coming <laughs> to the basket. 16 for Amari Stoudemire and James going up and uh, knocked away out of bounds. Here's what you were talking about. Just whoop, right through the legs. <laughs> Poor Carlos Boozer. Remember last year Jason Richardson threw the ball off his forehead and took a shot. <laughs> now Carmelo goes through his legs. Can you imagine what Charles Barkley would do to a man oh. on the next play who put the ball between <laughs> his legs like that? 20th row. Boozer, Boozer has got to get back at him in a kind way. Yeah, show him some affection. Yeah, as that's like exactly to say. right. <laughs> Stoudemire with 18 now, and here's James try to flip it over his head to Chris Kamen. Think about Barkley, the players would have been afraid to do it to him. <laughs> You're right. He no. Attempted to do that to him. Josh Howard ahead to James. Auditioning for the next slam dunk contest that he'll be in. He stole that one from Tracy McGrady. Remember, he did that a couple right. years ago yes, in the All-Star game. 83 to 67. I wonder if we'll get to 200. And do you get an assist on that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> assist to yourself? I'm assist not sure how yourself. that works. Talk to Marty Aronoff about that. Yes. Marty, Marty, Marty's going to give us the word. Ginobili, no assist. Marty says no assist, yeah. I believe him. And uh, there's Yao Ming. He has six in the game. So you wonder whether we're going to get to 200. They had a piece in the paper today about <laughs> Bill Spivey scoring right. 100 himself when he played. One of these guys may do it at the rate that we're going now. Will Chamberlain, of course, with 100 points in a game. Kirk Heinrich with a fancy move inside. Chamberlain got the 100 points in Hershey, Pennsylvania, actually. Who got 110? Bevo France. Bevo from Rio Grande <laughs> College. Bevo France. Oh, 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 oh. Don't even enter into this discussion I'm, I'm, yet. I'm wondering what's going on here. <laughs> Who? All right, 20 points for Stoudemire. James trying to get it to Carmelo, and it goes out of bounds. It's Carmelo Anthony, 15, and LeBron James, 22. And the Ney comes in for Yao Ming going out of the game. Well, this is a, the show part of the weekend, and I guess tomorrow as well with All-Star Saturday with all of the events. Steve, you're going to be in uh, one of them as well. Yeah, I'm going to be in a, a little shooting contest with Manu Ginobili and Jen Azy, who plays for the, or played for the Silver Stars uh, at the WNBA, just recently retired. And, we're taking on three other teams in a shooting contest. Should be fun. And uh, Jason Richardson going for his third straight slam dunk title. And Peja Stojakovic for his third straight three-point shootout. Knocked out of bounds with 15-21 remaining. A couple of teammates on different sides. Clippers Marco Yaric and Chris Kamen. Mike Dunleavy can't be real thrilled with Kamen right now because Yaric goes up for a layup. He's Kamen comes over and knocks him down. If, if you're going to hurt somebody in this game, don't make it your own teammate. <laughs> Mike Dunleavy in the game, feeding Stoudemire. Stoudemire looking to pile up points. This time it misses, and the rebound by Udonis Haslam. Bosch, they go the other way. If Stoudemire ever gets real consistent on that little medium-range jump, he's definitely going to be something to deal with because he goes to the basket with such force. Carmelo Anthony, two rebounds to go with his 15 points. Haslam. Driving in and fouled by Nene. Nene is solidly built. Let's take a look at LeBron with a little flip to himself, and Yao Ming says, I don't think I'll get in your way, young fella. What does that mean, coach? I don't know. 
I'm trying to figure it out. Is that the triangle and one? <laughs> triangle and two defense? There's Maybe it meant I should have passed. <laughs> <laughs> two hand chest pass. Well, it's an 18 point lead, and uh, Haslam on the line, the Miami Heat with two representatives, Udonis Haslam and Dwayne Wade. I tell you, you hear people talk about LeBron's athleticism, but when you see how quickly he accelerates, and, and even hand quickness, you know, releasing it off the dribble, getting it up and hitting them. Man. A lot of guys see people open, but they can't get the pass to them in time or in the right place. And both these guys very unselfish. Yarich put in by Boozer on the putback. Boozer now with 17, Stoudemire 20. They're the one-two punch for the sophomore. And there's Udonis Haslam. 17-point lead. And on the turnover, Bosch. All the way, Bosch. All the way, the lefty. It's getting out of control now, guys. It is. Boozer. And finally, a timeout call. Michael Cooper says, no defense, we're winning 91-74. Who cares? Collins calls a timeout. Strategically, I think it's an excellent timeout call by Doug Collins. Look at Chris Bosch, the young fellow from Toronto. And at the other end, Carlos Boozer up and off the glass. Backing up his words. Staples Center. I am joined by the multi-talented Jay-Z rapper, entrepreneur, now possibly an owner of the New Jersey Nets. Where does that stand right now, Jay-Z? Um, you know, going through NBA approval and things like that, but as far as the team, we uh, we won the bid. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Bruce Radner, myself, we going to Brooklyn. You're going to Brooklyn. Now, was that a tough decision to make? Huh? Was it a tough decision to make moving to Brooklyn? I'm from Brooklyn, so it was the easiest decision for me. It was the best thing. Let's talk a little bit about LeBron, because I know you're very close. First of all, what does this mean? What is that? That's, that's, that's the Rockefeller records right there. Yeah, yeah, he throws that up. He's rock la familia. Now, you're not surprised by his success, are you? Nah, I, I, I am a little bit, you know. I thought that he would have to learn the game, see because he don't even know the game. Wait till he, wait till he sees the court. You understand? Like, he's he just playing on pure talent right now. So when he sees the court and really understands the game, it's going to be a real problem. Him and Carmelo. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, well, enjoy the rest of the game. Thanks a lot, Jay-Z. Let's send it back to you, Dick. All right, Cheryl, thank you very much. Well, Brooklyn has produced uh, some great players over the years. Very definitely so. But I was waiting for Jay-Z to, Jay to say that he knew that James was going to be that good. Because then I would know he said something was not true. <laughs> Heck, I coached down in Iverson. I knew he was a very good player, but no way in the heck did I know he was going to be as good as he was in the NBA. Carmelo Anthony with the three-point attempt. Amari Stoudemire with 20. Boozer has 19. And Boozer, that's a one-two punch. Two of them, Stoudemire and Boozer, have 39. And the combination of the Anthony and LeBron James have a total of 37 to this point. So when LeBron and Jay-Z go out, who do you think picks up the check? Does it matter? Does a little thing like that matter between those two? <laughs> that's a good question. I mean, that, that's that's major dollars between those two guys. Ponder that one. Boozer now with 20. Well, Sunday night, it's the 2004 NBA All-Star Game exclusively on TNT. Coverage begins at 8 p.m. Eastern with TNT NBA All-Star Tip-Off presented by Gatorade X-Factor. And, of course, that is the conclusion to what is the grand gathering of NBA players, former players, coaches, the international scene. This is the weekend. Travel or discontinue called against Anthony. You know what I found really interesting about the All Star game, the big game that's coming up on Sunday, is that 50% of the starters were guys that opt to go right to the pro ball from high school. So it's a pretty that, high mouth. That, 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 that really says that. We do have a nation of very talented young people. 
And I think one of the things you mentioned earlier, Coach, you, you were raving about the confidence level of, of LeBron and Carmelo. And I think one of the reasons they have that much uh, belief in themselves is because of the road that was paved for them by Kobe and Garnett. Because all of a sudden, those guys were having some success pretty early on. And then these guys said, well, maybe we can do it right out of the gates. And, and they've done that. And they've helped their teams tremendously. And that's the big aspect of this is that Carmelo Anthony's uh, uh, Denver Nuggets team 31 wins compared to 17 last year and you got LeBron James the Cavs are 20 wins 33 but they had 17 last time as Wade puts it in let's go over to Craig who's with Shaq. Well Shaq has perhaps the biggest star in this whole All-Star weekend. What's your impression so far what we've seen here in this rookie challenge particularly from Carmelo Anthony and uh, LeBron James. Well right now they're having an uh, impressive performance. My sons wanted to see Uncle LeBron and Uncle Carmelo and, and <laughs> Uncle Stoudemire, so I just brought him here and they're going to have a good time. Yao Ming is playing in this game, also playing on Sunday. Now, ever since the All-Star balloting came out, Charles Barkley has been saying it's a travesty that Shaq should be starting instead of Yao. What is your reaction to the fact that you have to come off the bench of this game here in your hometown? My reaction is congratulations to Yao. This is where we live in. They have something that's called the voting process, and he won the voting fair and square. They opened it up in his hometown where, it's, where he has a billion, two billion people, and now he's a hometown favorite. And he deserved it in their eyes, and I congratulate him. With all the distractions your team, the Lakers, have gone through this year, particularly with Kobe off the court, Kyle Malone with the injuries, sitting at 31 and 19 here at the All Star break. What do you guys have to do to get it back together to actually make a serious run at the title? We just have to we just have to get everybody healthy, maintain our focus. And I've been here seven years and every year has been sort of a soap opera. So we, we so we know how to get it done with the so-called you know distractions that you know people people create for us. A lot of distractions. You having a good time here this weekend? I really don't call it a distraction. Of it. I just really call it a way of life and I'm kind of used to it. What's up Coach Thompson? Coach, you wanted to know if he could have an invitation to your party tonight. Where is it? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he always says to me, too. I don't want to know, Sager. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Craig and Shaq. I, you're not going to party, are you? Anyway? Uh, right oh, back no. to the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> 99 to 80, uh, matching the biggest lead for the sophomores, 19 points. We saw some uh, plays during that time, and there's the coach getting ready yeah. to go back to the Steve, hotel. Steve called me a senior citizen in the last broadcast. <laughs> really? So I proudly go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that? I don't remember that. <laughs> Talk about the resurrection of all the old times. <laughs> Wade with the basket. 99 82. Wade uh, getting a couple of hoops in the last couple of minutes has 12 points in the game. Here is Raymond, Ronald Murray, and uh, Heinrich on the turnover. And Wade again. Wade now with 14 points. James with 22. Stoudemire with 22. Those are the high scores here. Nearly halfway through the second half of this Don Milk rookie challenge. Nene. The thing that is so amazing in watching these guys, and you certainly realize not a lot of defense, is the quickness, the jumping ability, the athleticism. Within the same space that guys have been playing, you almost wish they'd widen the court. I mean, you look at this. I mean, these guys are going down. I mean, here's a guy that's a guard. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I really believe that the athletes have gotten so much better just in the last 15 years. I mean, when I came into the league in, in 88, a lot of the two guards were guys like Jeff Hornacek and Percy Hawkins, 6'3". Prototype, you know, prototype yeah, guys. And now all of a sudden, yeah. the guys playing those positions are Kobe Bryant and Tracy McGrady and LeBron. Guys who are 6'8", 220, 240 pounds. It's unbelievable how these people have just gotten bigger and stronger and more talented. Steve, no such thing as positions anymore. Guys play, you know, look at Kevin Garnett. He plays all five. Well, tomorrow there's a whole slate of NBA action on TNT, beginning with Reed to achieve from noon to one. NBA TV will present the Denver Nuggets all access five to six and then American Express Magic Johnson all stars celebration will take up the next hour and then 20 years of all star the NBA on TNT from seven to eight and wetting your appetite for NBA all star Saturday night presented by America online the coverage will begin at eight o'clock Eastern with TNT NBA all star tip off presented by Gatorade X Factor so 
The start of it tonight with the first primetime showing of the Got Milk Rookie Challenge. And uh, tomorrow, the All Star Saturday night, finishing up a, a big day. And then, of course, the main attraction, the 2004 All Star Game Sunday. Well, we talked about athleticism when you see these guys, but let me ask you a question. Is anybody out here as fast as Kenny the Jet was with the ball? No. Nobody. No. Nobody. You're exactly exactly right. You could be faster. You may be close. Exactly. Exactly. Because Kenny could push it. And, you know, you, you, you still see so many guys now, though, Steve. That, that's the thing that happens. So many guys can jump. The big guys are very mobile. You can't identify positions. I don't know why you guys are kissing up to Kenny the Jet. I mean, he was talking all this trash the last couple of weeks to me about this three-point contest that we were going to have. Guy didn't even show up today. You kidding me? He tweaked his knee, he said. I said Kenny was going to win, too. I didn't let you know it. Oh. <laughs> that was Murray hey, with his You mean he didn't show it up? It wasn't a race, oh. Coach. It was a three-point contest. <laughs> We're going to get a rebuttal, I think, sooner or later. That's me in the dick. He said it wasn't a race. Yeah, Bosch <laughs> with the reverse layup and Ginobili the rebound. Picking up the top scorers. Stoudemire with 22, leading the sophomores. LeBron James has 22. Oh. And now uh, Amari has 24 points. Dwayne Wade has had a big... Second half scoring 10 of his 16 points for the record. And LeBron and Carmelo right now on the bench with 920 to go in the second half. Josh Howard spinning his way in. The only uh, injury, Jarvis Hayes, uh, shaken up, not playing the second half representing the Wizards. And of all the guys out here, I would say Josh Howard is the most comfortable since he plays for Dallas. This is kind of oh, the yeah. way Dallas yeah. plays anyway. It's probably too slow for him. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Let's pick it up a little bit. Yeah, I think Nelly's probably home going, wow, Josh is playing some pretty good defense tonight. <laughs> Dwayne Wade with the jump shot. 107-91, eight minutes to go. And you talk about talented. Dwayne Wade has nothing but upside to his game. Oh, absolutely. I had a chance to see him in the NCAA when he was playing for Marquette, and I was just so pleasantly surprised with his ability. I mean, he's... And he brought the team to the Final Four. Absolutely. Heinrich going behind him to Bosch. Bosch is a guy that even though people expect it to be good is a pleasant surprise yes. too. Most of these youngsters that you know we have in this game probably exceeded what really was expected. I mean, and you really never know. That's the thing I was saying about Allen Iverson. I knew he was a great player and would be a great pro, but you have no way of knowing to what extent these guys will, you know, really succeed in the NBA. I think it's hard to tell, but you know, Kevin O'Neill just absolutely loves Bosch. His coach up in Toronto told me recently that he just feels like he's he wants to play and wants to work and has so much passion for the game. And as you know, Coach, that's usually what separates the great players from the good ones. Well, that, that, that's exactly right. And that's one of the things that we said earlier about the two guys that are coming in now, Anthony and James. Not only do they play the game well, they play it as if they're having fun. And they're both uh, coming in to have some more fun here with the score 109 93. It's a 16 point game. Biggest lead was 19. Just under eight minutes remaining. Anthony with 15 points tonight. LeBron James has 22. Speaking of Allen Iverson, he was an MVP of this uh, rookie attraction back in 1997. And there's the comparison of uh, what the two have done uh, tonight. And uh, but you know the interview they did with Cheryl before the game really indicated what they're all about. And it wasn't tongue in cheek. He's going to win the game. Exactly. And no, and, 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 and you know what? Besides the fact that they do want to win, it's obvious by the fact that they have improved the scores of their teams in the winning column. They have improved them. But the fact that these guys have the camaraderie that they have, they have every reason to hate one another. <laughs> they have every reason, stop to think about it, they have every reason to hate how they've been compared and dissected. But these guys obviously have a very healthy relationship. Mano Ginobili at one end and Josh Howard at the other. Hey, when Bird and Magic came out and they played each other in the NCAA Finals, I mean, they had a respect for each other, but they obviously weren't as close as uh, these two guys as Murray hits a three. Well, I think Bird and Magic both understood that, that they were good for each other, that the competition and the level at which they each played was going to raise the entire league, and then their rivalries that, that they would have in the Finals just added to all that. Well, and it's not a love fest either. You know, we really want a mutual respect, but competition is what it is. It is us against them. It is you against the other guy. And it's Stoudemire who's looking for the scoring record. He has 28 points, and the record for this game is 31. 
And there is Stoudemire who uh, nearly got within one. Kobe Bryant and Jason Richardson last year at 31 points. Bryant at 97. Gilbert Arenas at 30. Chris Kamen gives the uh, locals a chance to cheer. It's 118 97 now. Big boy, show off. <laughs> And here's uh, Josh Howard. Alley oop. Dwayne Wade. How about Dwayne Wade, who had, you know, six points at the end of the first half, now with 20. And the officials have put away their whistles for good tonight. <laughs> Ginobili firing a bullet to Amari Stoudemire, who now has 30 points. And I think it is safe to say, guys, with six minutes to go, Amari Stoudemire will set the scoring record for a game. Tayshawn, or that was uh, James missing from outside. Uh, Ginobili doing a good job of playmaking. He has eight assists in this one. When you look at the bodies of both James and Stoudemire for their positions, it's just amazing, particularly the fact that these are new guys to the league. Tremendous bodies. Let's take a look at Amari Stoudemire and his body as he goes in with a dunk as we take a timeout. Look at this athleticism by this young fella. And then, of course, Dwayne Wade going way up, showing a little athleticism of his own. The lead is 21. Sophomores lead the rookies, 120 to 99, 542 to go, and this view of LA is from high atop the Transamerica building, providing us great scenics all night. And uh, traffic on the 110 is not light to moderate, it is heavy. Well, the most points in the rookie challenge, guys, Kobe Bryant and Jason Richardson, 31, Richardson doing it last year. Do we have to talk about that traffic on the 110? What did it take us, <laughs> no. three hours you know, to get it? Long time. <laughs> 30 right now for Amari Stoudemire. And uh, so he is one behind uh, tying the scoring lead. And remember, you can only participate in two of these games. And Stoudemire had 18 points last year for the rookies and should set the mark before this one is over. Tayshawn Prince on the line. Coach, I hope the traffic isn't too bad uh, for you on your way to Shaq's party tonight. You, <laughs> you, hopefully you'll be able to get there. And, and I'm sure by the time you come home, it'll be 4 or 5 o'clock well, we in have the a, morning. John, so we won't have a be in traffic then. We have a curfew, John. We, we definitely, we definitely <laughs> do. Shaq has to give me the directions first. 121.99, <laughs> oh, the biggest lead was 23. Are you allowed to do that? No. <laughs> <laughs> the refs have just swallowed their whistles. It's a backcourt violation. James with a three. LeBron James with 25. You talk about the expectations, Dick, of LeBron. Right. That's one thing that I don't think anybody realized that he could shoot the ball as well as he does. Everybody was so skeptical about it, and I think he's improved. I'd be curious what Steve thought. He's gotten better. He has. I saw him in the preseason. He was really struggling. He was off balance. He's gotten better, and I think he has pretty solid form. And with a lot of work, he, he, he could be a very, very good shooter. And Amari Stoudemire has established the most points in a rookie game with his 32nd point. Uh, and here is Murray to the slams it through. And uh, 127 to 102, and there's a long pass down to, there they are, Carmelo and LeBron having a great time. They're not gonna play in Sunday's All-Star game, but guys, probably the last time we'll be able to say that. Well, I think so, I think so. You, you know, obviously they could have played, obviously they might have deserved to play, but 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 there's something good about that too, is giving some of the guys that have been in the league an opportunity, because these guys have played many, many All-Star games. Yeah, this, you're right, Dick. I think this might be the last time in their careers, at least until they get old and weathered, that uh, they will not be in the All-Star game. And I think somebody knew that when they were making the decision. Yeah. To. James. Carmelo tried to save it. Cheryl Miller. Thanks a lot, Dick. And I'm joined by someone who actually doesn't need any introduction, Kenny the Jet. Joined by family, his son, his daughter, and his nephew, and so far, the crew. the crew. What do you think about the game so far, Kenny? It's a really defensive struggle. That's what I like <laughs> about this game right now. Now, the one thing I wanted to see is just contesting. 
little more contesting, but that the moves and everything is just. I'm kidding. It's been nothing but three points and dunks. There's nothing in between. No, but there's a little. It makes the dunks better when somebody goes after it, and then you still dunk on them or you block the dunk. Ah. That's the only thing contesting on the dunks I'd like to see. Well, you know, would have made it better. John Thompson said that there's no one out there on the court so far that he's seen that is as quick as you with the ball. That's a big compliment coming big. Uh, Coach Thompson, I never disagree with him. I've never <laughs> ever disagreed with him in my whole life. Especially now, from baseline to baseline, I could get him. I could get him from free throw line to free throw line. That was my job to get it as fast as hey, I could. Kenny, one more thing, because rumor has it that you pumped out Steve Kerr, that you came up with an injury. Please tell me it's not so. Steve Kerr doesn't want to see me, first of all. <laughs> like my game is is right now was like it when I left. Steve never touched the ball. He's never touched the basketball since he stopped playing. There's no man alive that's not in the NBA can shoot better than me. All right, Dick. See, Kenny's not backing down. Let's send it back over to you guys. Hey, maybe, maybe we have a, a different kind of battle going on right now. Huh? Let's clear the floor right yeah, now. That's right. Did, did she say he's not backing down? He didn't even show up. That's, that's what I call backing down. You know, the interesting thing about Kenny, uh, I heard Magic and Charles both said that they had no desire to coach. Uh, when I was coaching at Georgetown, Kenny did a lot of coaching with youngsters during the summer. And I've been somewhat surprised that someone is not going to try to put him in the coaching profession in the NBA. Well, there's a uh, testimonial right now for uh, for Kenny Smith. But, you know, this rookie challenge, we ought to have the TNT Shooters Challenge uh, <laughs> yeah. between you guys. Here's hey, Murray. I'm ready. You know, I'm, I'm ready, and, and I guess... Kenny had a hangnail or something and he couldn't I make it. <laughs> All right, injury report. So uh, when you say injury report, that's that's not a, a pleasant thing. Craig Sager. Well, Dick, the injury report on Kenny Smith. He was holding a clinic uh, for children this morning as he does so well. And he accidentally sprained his knee helping the kids. But then again, I've heard another report that says he heard himself patting himself on the back. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I was talking about. He's been involved with young people an awful lot. Yes, he has. I, I, I still wanted to see it. Uh, Steve, you know how to have been for you. Right? Yeah, sure. Good, gosh. Now you say that. <laughs> well, Doug Collins is taking it on the uh, chin right now. Uh, the rookies are getting outscored 138 to 110 coming up inside the NBA presented by Hyundai and a live talk with Commissioner David Stern. Hey Dick isn't this why Doug Collins went back to the broadcast booth? He was tired of taking beatings, <laughs> beatings like, like this. this. Right. There he is again. Did Doug, did Doug, 28. Look at the expression on his face. Did he need this? <laughs> he hates he this tonight. <laughs> he hates losing. Whatever the game is right. That's right. He's talking strategy right now. You know, we, we should have defended the screen and roll better. You know, I, I tell you what, Kenny Smith had a good point, and, and this is just an opinion based on nothing. I think ultimately there's going to be more. Uh, the, this game has gotten to the point where it is all showtime, that, it, that you're, you're going to see a little bit more. Let's challenge him. I just have a feeling that it may evolve into that. You mean in the last, two, last two minutes? No, here? no, I think that it might be that way. No, I think it might be that way. That, 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 you know, as this game evolves, especially on prime time, that there's going to be more of a, of a, you know, a, an emphasis to say, come on, let's just not let these guys just put up shots like this. Let's play them a little bit because it's still the game of basketball. And if LeBron and Carmelo said we want to win, well, to win, you got to play both hands. Uh, you know what? I like I'm not. I'm, no, come on. I'm not buying it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm watching Carlos Cruz well, just stand there. Right now, well, LeBron James. I think it's it exciting by. because, first of all, it's the first time you have seen, and being entertained as Yao Ming as well, Carmelo Anthony, LeBron James on the same team. Yeah, they, they said they wanted to win, but you know they didn't really back it up with their defense. I think when they're talking about wanting to win, they're saying in the regular season we want to win, and they've shown that with their respective teams. Turning into a slam dunk contest. I think we left Dick hanging that time. Didn't we? <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. Sorry, Dick. We just okay. couldn't buy it. It's okay, guys. <laughs> I don't you know. If, if it ever happens, you'll hear from me. We will. Yeah, well, yeah. you know what? You're right. It's no the, the All Star game. It, it does happen that way occasionally, where guys will get competitive, and it'll turn pretty fiery the last quarter. Uh, but it has to be a close game for, for that to develop. I, I think it has to be. I don't think it's going to be the players will decide it has to be this way. I think the league will decide that we should have a little more of that, whatever that is, if you can measure that kind of defense. 
a little fancy well, stuff. I think they'll do like baseball did with the All-Star game. They said the uh, the home team in the World Series will be the All-Star winner. So uh, yeah, maybe, maybe David Stern will do that with the rookie How about, game. Yeah, under a half a minute to go. Whoever wins the rookie game <laughs> yeah. has the home court advantage yes. in the NBA Finals. Yes. <laughs> preview of the dunk contest and preview of two players who you're going to see in All-Star games to come. Jay-Z off his seat as well. The final seconds, the sophomores win it 142 to 116. Scoring record, Amari Stoudemire. These things are so fun time. My friends are having yeah. a good time. I mean, everybody's Smiles. enjoying Smiles. Smiles. Good exactly. times. Good times. Still have some seconds left. And here it is. We have more time. We have, we have a dunk contest winner. The judges are holding up tens. And the scorekeeper is holding the clock. <laughs> the three misses. Amari Stoudemire, the series record, 36 points and 11 rebounds. Carlos Boozer backed up his talk with 25. Flip Murray at 25 and 10 assists. Yao Ming can get ready for the All-Star game on Sunday. LeBron James with 33. Wayne Wade at 22 and Carmelo Anthony 17. Final score, the sophomores 142, the rookies 118 as we see some of the spectacular plays.